Hi, welcome back to Cummins Repower Garage. I'm Brittany Barella here again with Steve Sanders. And today we're gonna to talk about the intake system that you need to install for your R2.8 crate engine. So this engine is a little bit different than your normal naturally aspirated gasoline engine with the fact that it's turbocharged. So when you're talking about your intake system, you really need to be getting your clean uh, ambient air and routing it into your compressor inlet, which is actually on the exhaust side of the engine. So a little bit different than just taking it straight into your intake. Uh, so that compressor inlet is right here. You'll just take that cap off and you as the installer is in charge of all the routing from your air filter down to that compressor inlet. The one piece that we do give you is this MAF tube. So this is very critical for your engine calibration to operate correctly. This MAF sensor measures the amount of fresh air flow that's coming into the engine and it's used to calculate the ratio of EGR to fresh air flow. So if you don't use this tube that we provide you or you don't use something with the same exact dimensions, our calibration is gonna be off, which will affect the performance of your engine as well as the emissions of the engine. So not anything that you really wanna mess with, definitely recommend that you use these tubes. The tube does have an airflow arrow on it along with the MAF sensor, which also has an airflow arrow on it. Paying attention to that as you're installing this tube that your air filter will go on this end of it and your hose will go on this end. So to show you that in a vehicle, we have our black Jeep here. Yeah, the black Jeep, uh, some of you may have seen uh, various shows or events, magazine articles. Uh, this has been all over the place. So this was our first demonstrator Jeep for the R28 crate engine program. So we've put uh, tens of thousands of miles on this thing. We've learned a lot from this thing. It's been in chassis labs, emissions labs. Uh, it's done a lot of work. Um, it's done in its stock form, minus a two inch lift. It's done all of uh, Hell's Revenge at Moab, Easter Jeep Safari, all this good stuff, uh, but it didn't happen overnight. You know, this Jeep was originally equipped with a inline six uh, naturally aspirated gasoline engine. And like Brittany said, our engine is a turbocharged in engine. So some things need to change in here. Um, the first thing that is very noticeable is we had to move the radiator back, <clears throat> which we could do because we lost two cylinders, but we added a charge air cooler. So once you have that hot, um, exhaust gas that is uh, spinning your turbine wheel and compressing your intake air, the intake air is hot. And you've got to cool the intake air down before it can actually go into the intake on the engine. Uh, you'll get a light or a malfunction if you go above 197 um, degrees Fahrenheit on that intake. So it's important to spec a charge air cooler uh, that can get that, uh, get in that 1200 BTU heat rejection range uh, to keep those intake temps cool. Uh, the other thing to note about our uh, intake setup that uh, Brittany was showing you is we do have this uh, crankcase breather. So any light duty automotive uh, emissions regulated vehicle in North America has closed crankcase ventilation systems. So on our valve cover, we have this uh, coalescing filter and this breather tube that we supply up to this hose clamp. From there, depending on where you put this uh, MAF tube, you need to go ahead and plumb the rest of this in between your MAF sensor and your compressor inlet. So we say for optimum performance, stay about nine inches behind that MAF sensor. And if you can, stay about 12 inches ahead of that compressor inlet. Um, if you don't hook that up, not only will you have a bit more smell, you'll see this is a, a pretty positive current case um, system. So you'll have kind of an oil mist, which is regular to see. That's why you don't want it just venting to atmosphere. Not only will it be a little stinky, um, it will leave oil residue wherever it's coming out. Uh, so close that. It's not bad for your engine to, to have that going into the intake system. That's what it's designed for. Um, and that's the only way you can actually stay compliant with this and meet our emissions regulations. So coming back to your air intake system, uh, like I said, you're gonna have to spec from the filter down to your compressor housing, and that's gonna consist of a couple of components. A couple things you need to keep in mind when you're choosing those components, you're gonna need 300 CFM of fresh air flow for rated power from your filter down to your compressor inlet. So just choosing a filter that'll allow for that airflow is pretty critical. You also need to reduce your amount of pressure drop through that system. So we say about 15 inches of water if your filter is clean or 20 inches of water if your filter is dirty, um, pressure drop from that filter down to that compressor housing. So it's gonna be a little bit difficult to measure in your home garage, but just taking or keeping in mind uh, to reduce that pressure drop, keep the number of bends to a minimum and being conscious of your transitions from your three inch pipe down to the two and a quarter inch compressor inlet, making those transitions as smooth as possible. 
Other things to keep in mind are your air filter itself. It really should be 99.9% .9 efficient in capturing fine dust, but you don't want to use an oiled air filter because if you do, you have the potential of fouling your MAF sensor. Again, like I said, the MAF sensor is really important for the performance and emissions of your engine. So if you're using an oiled air filter, you're going to ruin that sensor. Last thing, like I said, this tube is very important. You need four inches ahead of your MAF sensor from your filter to wherever your MAF sensor is placed and three inches from your MAF sensor before that first bend. And you can see that here in the Jeep as well. Last thing, this tube, three inches in diameter. If you are gonna use something that is an R tube, make sure it's also three inches. Yeah, one thing I think uh, is important to note, we show this Jeep off a lot and not everything we do on it is per our installation guide or recommendation. And you'll see the configuration under the hood change several times uh, when we do different testing on this. You see extra thermal couples and all this stuff that you don't have to do, but it's part of our testing. One thing we've seen with our uh, customers who have had uh, better success in right sizing their cooling package is making sure they're not sucking this hot engine bay air like we are. So we're kind of a worst case scenario where we're not isolating uh, fresh air into this intake. We're really sucking in a lot of hot engine bay air and that makes it a lot harder for an engine to cool when it's breathing hot air to begin with. So we're really working this one hard. This isn't how you should do it. Yeah, I guess that's an important note that I missed is um, reducing your rise over ambient or whatever kind of your ambient temperature is versus what your compressor inlet is seeing. Um, so if you're sucking in engine compartment air, your rise over ambient is going to be a lot higher than if you can isolate this or pull it from a cool air source, your rise over ambient is going to be a lot lower. So that's definitely a good point to keep in mind when mm -hmm. placing your air filter in general. Mm -hmm. Clocking is also very important. Yeah, so that MAF sensor again, it really wants to be upright. It has the potential of going I think about 45 degrees in each direction. Uh, the only thing you really want to avoid is having that MAF sensor on the bottom of your tube. So you don't want that sensor flipped all the way upside down. It'll be able to collect condensation and, and moisture that way. So you want to keep that as upright as, as best as possible when you're actually installing that tube in your vehicle. And on the charge air side, um, if, if you're new to charge air coolers and diesel and turbo diesel especially, uh, other bits you have to take into consideration are your boots and clamps. So you are pushing 24 to 27 pounds of boost with this engine, and you might not be used to using these, you know, either silicone boots or rubber, whatever you uh, supply, but make sure you get clamps that are rated for that and that you know how to tighten those and you have a good seat because you will blow air past those clamps and you'll feel boost pressure loss and stumbling and smoking performance drops. So make sure you do a thorough inspection. If during the design of your build, you can kind of take that into account as you're putting things together, and keep those clamps oriented so that you can easily get to them and tighten them after the them, fact. Yeah. That's very convenient. Uh, we've had a couple media project Jeeps where that was done after the fact and you have to take a headlight out or something like that to reach one of those, uh, to tighten it up. But um, making sure you have uh, plenty of flexibility in that so that when your engine does rock around or you know the front clip of your vehicle rocks around, those two can move independently without uh, breaking your charge air cooler or cracking one of those uh, lines. Yeah, I think your charge air cooler is one component, again, where you can go to some of these SEMA members. Um, there are proven solutions out there, both for the sizing and the installation, but also the performance of your charge air cooler. This is kind of a finicky part that you definitely want to get right so that the performance of your engine it is what you're expecting it to be. So definitely check out those SEMA members, work with the aftermarket suppliers to, to find one of those proven solutions. Again, CumminsRepower.com, we have those vehicle profiles that we have mentioned a little bit for mounts and adapters, but you can also check those out for your charge air cooler. And that way you can, again, get a proven solution. You know what works right, you know the engine performance will be what you're expecting. So I think that's it for air intake system. See you next time on Cummins Repower Garage.